Control flow, what is it? Well, it feels natural that when you read code, you should do it line by line without skipping over parts or repeating anything. But in Python and basically all programming languages, you can imagine there's use cases of running the same code you know, for a number of different reasons. So you can control the sequence of what code is executed and when. And doing this is called control flow. So in Python, there's really three main types of control flow tools. There's if, while, and for. And I wanna look at each of them. So here I'll just show the first two, if and while, and then we'll look at for a bit later. So often you wanna execute some code only if some condition is met. So Python uses if statements to run a piece of code if some condition is fulfilled. So you can see here how the if statement works. If checks whether the logical operation returns true or false, and if it's true, it's gonna execute that code in the block. Otherwise, it's gonna skip over that piece of code. So translating that into Python, the code looks something like this. So code starts with the keyword if, then you add the condition that will be checked. Don't forget to add a colon on the end, which usually indicates that we're expecting an indented block. And then the code which is to be executed, if that condition is met, is what's put inside the indented block. Everything inside that level of indentation is gonna be executed. And indentation is a way of telling Python that the group of statements belongs to that if statement. So in this case, we're indicating that the, indicated, the indented code belongs to the if statement. So to tell Python that you've finished specifying the inner block of code, you remove the indentation and go back to the top level. So in this case, the condition is that x has to be greater than three, and in our case, x is five. So of course, the condition is true. And what that means is that the block inside the if statement is gonna run, and this message is printed out. Let's take a look at what happens if a condition is not met. So same condition, now it's not gonna be fulfilled, and therefore the block inside the statement is just skipped over. In many occasions, instead of just specifying what happens if the statement is met, you might wanna specify what happens in the other case. So you can kind of switch between which piece of code is gonna run based on that condition. And so for those cases, you can use the optional else keyword. So this else statement here, if we include it, it's gonna include a, another block of code, like in the if statement. And this block of code will only run if the condition is false. So notice that we don't have to put any condition after the else, it just runs if the condition after the if, which is required before the else, isn't met. Notice that else is at the same level of indentation as if. It's not indented, it's at the same level. So let's look at another example. Once again, the condition is that x has to be greater than five, but now if that condition doesn't hold, the block corresponding to the else statement is gonna be executed. So, so if we use if else, we're really forced to work with absolutes. It's either true or it's false. So what about where I've got a third option? Well, in that case, I can introduce another part of this control flow, which is the elif statement. Elif is kind of between if and else. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna be a secondary or third or fourth, I'm gonna have as many as I want, another condition for, the, uh, for Python to check. So if the first condition is not met, then it's gonna check the, the next elif. And then if so, if, it's got, if it has another elif, it's gonna check on and on and on. So the block in the else statement will only run if none of those conditions in the if or any of the elifs are met. So just remember that both elif and else are optional as well. So this control flow has two conditions. First condition checks if the number's greater than three. Second one checks if the number's equal to three. And if none of those are met, the code in the else is gonna run. And you can see that after running the cell, the code inside the elf, elif statement runs. And that's because the first condition is false, but the second one's true. So you've just seen how to execute certain blocks of code if a condition or some other conditions hold. And that's gonna allow us to have a certain level of control of flow of the script. Aside from that, there's another kind of control flow which you're likely to use, which is when you wanna repeat a piece of code a number of times. One way that you can do that is with a while statement. So while lets you run a particular piece of code whilst a specific condition holds. 
So we can see in the diagram here that the script enters the while loop and checks condition. And if that condition is true, the block is executed. And then the condition is checked again, and it's gonna repeat the previous step until the condition is false. So notice that if the condition is always true, the loop is gonna run infinitely. So in Python, while loop looks like this, starts with the while keyword, then you add the condition to be checked every time I go to the top of this loop. And again, don't forget the colon, and that's telling Python I'm expecting an indented block on the next line. So the block of indented code is the code that will be repeated until the condition is not met anymore. Notice that if before I start the while loop, the condition is already not met, then the block of code will be skipped. It won't even be run once. So at each iteration, the first value of x here is printed out, and then the value of x is incremented by one. And after that, Python's gonna check if the value of x is lower than five. If it is, we'll repeat the code. Otherwise, we'll get out of the loop. In the if statement, we could add an else statement in case the if condition was false, but we don't need to. And it will be logical that the while statement also have an else statement. So let's check if that's the case. All right, cool. So here's Stack Overflow answer. Let's check that out. Yeah, we'll check this answer. Okay. So yeah, it looks like while can have else, and the else is only executed when your while condition becomes false. So according to Stack Overflow, we can use the else statement, and it works similar to the else statement and if statement. Let's check the answer by going through this example. Um, so after finishing the code in the while loop, it's going to run inside the else statement. The code inside the else statement can run if the condition is not met a priori as well. So in this example, the condition is not met even before using the while statement, so it goes straight to the else statement. If the condition in the loop is always true, it's going to run infinitely, and that's not ideal and probably not what you meant to do. So let's take a look at this example. In this case, x always remains the same and it's always gonna satisfy this condition. So, oh no, that means the loop is gonna run forever, but not forever, because you can stop it. So just hit Control C or press the stop button if you're in a notebook. So usually you're gonna run an infinite loop if the condition is complex or you're unsure when to stop iterating. There's a better tool, which is the for loop for iterating through something where you know how many times you've got to go through it. But I'm not going to go into that just yet. So in the case of a, um, in the case of using any of these tools, really, any of these, any loops, including the while, there are some other keywords which can be pretty useful. And one of them is break. So break will just break out of this loop. That means it's not going to run any more iterations, even if there's still code inside the loop, it's simply going to stop wherever it is. So you can see that everything below the break statement wasn't executed when I run this cell. So now you know what control flow is. We've seen how to use the if and the else statements as well as the elif. You can have many elifs. Um, we've seen how to look at those conditions and determine what parts of the code to run. We've also seen that we can use loops. So we saw the while loop there. That's the first kind of loop we're going to look at. And that's going to continue to execute block code until it, the condition is unfulfilled. And finally, yeah, we just sort of break keyword there to break out of that. So that's enough for now.